Hey, welcome to the Truth About Real Estate podcast. Today I have special guest Chris Perfontaine. Chris is the founder and CEO of Smart Real Estate Coach and an all-in-one real estate investing and mentorship program that helps investors of all levels to find success. He's an expert on buying and selling on terms and real estate coaching. Hey, Chris, glad to have you on the show. How's it going? Good to be here, Matt. Oh, it's going awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So let's get started. Let's talk about, you know, how did you get into real estate? And you've been in the business for quite a while now. Yeah. Thanks for dating me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I've been at it since 91, 1991. Um, you know, how did I get involved? I, I hung around. My dad had a family business. It was not real estate, but he, he had brick and mortar buildings and he would build them himself and then he'd lease them back to his company. And as a young kid, I, I didn't understand that. It took me a while to get my head wrapped around. I said, I remember saying to him, you're the same person. What do you mean you build it and you lease it to your company? So once I got to understand that, then I hung out with uh, some of his contacts who would go and flip land. So I was just around it uh, directly and indirectly. That's how I was. That was my foray into the business. And then I uh, started building some homes. I was never a builder, but I had a friend that would do the field work and I would do the, you know, the inside work, so to speak. Then I uh, journeyed to a realty executives franchise. So I put my realtor hat on for a while and broker hat on. Sold that to Cobalt Banker in 2000, and that kind of started the journey of coaching and doing my own investments. However, that led to the great, uh, I call it the, the debacle in my book, and that was the 08 crash. And yeah. so that just pushed us to re-engineer everything to what we're doing today, which I'm sure we'll dive into. Nice. Wow. That's a, that's quite a bit of uh, things. Let's dive into some of it. So you, the first thing you mentioned too, is that your dad was into, into real estate and that he would build his own places and rent it back out to himself. That sounds exactly like kind of McDonald's, you know, that's actually really smart. You buy, you know, you buy the property, you own it, you build it and you lease it back out to someone or to yourself. Um, you know, McDonald's leased out and franchised, right? Yeah. That's a smart move because you're actually creating a lot of value that way you, you know, you own the asset, which is the most, one of the most important parts of the business anyways. Yeah, I did it on my own building actually. So right now I'm at my home office, but my mm -hmm. building's five minutes down the street. I bought it on terms, so no banks. We'll talk about that later, but I also lease it to all of my companies. Plus I have two other tenants. So it's super lucrative. Obviously you pay yourself top market or higher rent and there's yeah. some tax advantages built in. That's really smart. Uh, definitely a smart way to do it. Can't wait to dive into that. Um, the next thing you mentioned too, you you know you became a realtor as well for, uh, for a bit of time at different companies, and then you just started to keep kept investing, right? Yeah, I, after I sold to Cobalt Banker, which was a good experience, I started doing a lot uh, in the year two thousand. I started really hitting heavy with the uh, buying multis, mm -hmm. three, four, five, six, sometimes as high as eight, and converting them to condos. So you do the engineering, you do the legal work, you set up a condo association, you do all that required stuff, and then you sell off the individual units. That was a great run for us. We did get caught with a few of them at, in the crash. But, it, you know, at that little run up of doing those, Matthew, we'd get, you know, the engineering done, the legal done, paint the units. We wouldn't even be done and they'd be selling. So that <laughs> nice. was, a, it was a great market. Some older gentleman taught me that when I was younger. And, and so that was a nice little run for a while. And then that then got us into coaching all throughout North America, mostly, um, yeah, Canada and U.S., but mostly U.S. Good. Uh, that's, you know, I think going into coaching is one of the great ways of real estate, too, especially since you come from a really good background of uh, doing a lot of business and learning a lot. And especially when you learn how to do investing multi units, learn how to um, buy and sell and use terms to do that, then, you know, Definitely a coach is a way to help other agents accelerate their business and even investors want to accelerate their business. So like what made you want to get into coaching? Why not just stay as an investor or stay as you know a builder? Like, why go coaching? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's the biggest question. Here's the deal. Like until you coach, until someone listening coaches, this is hard to grasp. But the fact is when you coach, your your own game gets better. It has yep. to. You sharpen your own saw. If I go to my certified coaches right now, because we have our own coaches now. And I, and I say to them, why are you coaching? They give the same answer back that I've said for years, which is, hey, my game gets better. Like I have to be on the cusp. I have to be one step ahead of the students if I'm going to be a good coach. Secondly, Matthew, for me to see someone come into our community and literally go from, say, corporate or some other job that they hate to learning from scratch real estate and then seeing the life-changing events, again, that's an experience emotionally and mentally that doesn't have a price tag. It just doesn't until you do it. It's hard to hard to put that into dollar figures, but it's amazing. 
Yeah, I've seen that too, because actually in, in my career, like I've always been mentored in technology background. I was always mentored. So in the real estate background, I just started coaching a lot of agents and um, helping top producing agents grow their business. And I, I use the technology skills with the real estate skills to help agents accelerate business. And I think it's a lot of fun. And I actually have the same thought process is that we only get better when we teach and coach people and we learn from each other and share our experiences, but we get better together faster. And that's a lot of fun too. And the gratitude that you get from it, you know, just, yeah. I agree. I, I agree. You can't, um, you can't not get better if you're teaching this. And it's one thing to be a top producer. And mm -hmm. I'm talking whether you're an investor like our world or you're an agent, doesn't matter. Top producer being successful. Yeah. It's one thing to do that, but it's another thing to actually coach it. So you have, when you have to, you have to go ahead and externalize that. It's a whole different ballgame. You got to know it well. Exactly. Because I think, yeah, you're right. Because when you're coaching, you, you have to understand so many different personality types, so many people's different motivations and skill sets, and you have to find a way to tune it to fit their personal criteria and their personal goals and help them build it and help them break through all the barriers that they have, you know, and figure out that strategy. That's a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and on that note, I, I love your opinion on this, but I think you hit something pretty heavy there just in that one sentence. And that was the mental game here, mm -hmm. the mindset game. There's like three pillars we teach always with everything. And that is mindset, skill set, and systems. I can stack systems and skill sets. You can, all the teachers can till we're blue in the face. Yeah. It doesn't matter if the mindset piece is not strong enough. It will be a total failure. It's like you're stacking on a bad foundation. So until you can grow that mental piece to drag the other two with it, you're wasting time by putting more and more skill sets in there. And most people don't realize that in real estate. They'll, they'll go to a niche and grab this coach and grab this skill set and grab this course. Why aren't they doing deals? It's the mental piece. Yep. You're absolutely right. Like in like in my technology career, I trained like hundreds of engineers in cybersecurity, but in the real estate career, I trained like a lot of agents in building their business. And a lot of it was mental mind shift. Like, we, like you said, all the marketing, all the tech, everything's there. It just, they need to have the mindset to say, Hey, I can overcome this. Like they're always afraid, afraid of failure, afraid of calling, afraid of doing, afraid of the results that's going to happen. That's going to be good. They're afraid of it. So once they realize that you can get them over the barriers and by breaking down some of the fears, um, some things I use is like, okay, I'm just going to help them improve their brand, the marketing, the, the, the feeling of what they, you know, put out there. And once they start getting overcoming that and getting more confidence first, then they're willing to take on more challenges. You don't start introducing all the tech yet until they can get over those fears. And then by doing that, they're going to feel better and start doing better. And then they'll start accepting more and going at it. If they really are passionate, passion is the number one thing that drives them fast. Yeah, I agree. I agree with the passion. I agree with um, the power of, or I'm a big advocate of the power of association. Like make no doubt about it that the people you associate with, if it's, you, if it's not just your coach, but the community perhaps, or the people you hang out with outside of work, mm -hmm. that group, that immediate 10 call it or five in your center of influence, they dramatically affect you mentally and financially dramatically. And so you better be careful with that. Yeah. Don't, a lot of people say too, like if you're the smartest person in a room, you're the wrong room. You know, you need yeah. to be next to pe five other people who are heavily or more motivating than you are and going to push you and drive you to go further than you ever gone. You know, that really does really work really well. Yeah. Yeah. So picture this. It's uh, about as far as hanging out with people we mm -hmm. had, I'll give you a couple examples. We had Ed Milet uh, on our show and we also had him speak at one of our events. You cannot hang out with Ed Milet for more than 10 minutes without going, <laughs> Oh boy, I'm thinking too small. You just can't. Uh, yesterday we had on the show Clinton Sparks. He was a hip hop artist, but his background was uh, drugs and jail time and no dad. And so, how did he do what he did? It was all this right here. It was all the mental piece. It's it's absolutely amazing. So when you put yourself in the pathway of these people, it's pretty difficult not to think big. So put yourself in the path. Reach out to them. People say, well, how can I talk to a Matthew or how can I talk to an Ed Milet? How about pick up the phone and call them? How about compliment their book or their show? How about email them? You'll be shocked at how many people will, will answer you. I can tell you, I can count on one hand the amount of people that reach out to me and say, hey, Chris, I, I read your book. Can I just chat with you for a few minutes? Or I have some value to add, or can you help me? They don't. If they do, I talk to them. Exactly. A lot of people are afraid of you saying yes or no, and they don't know unless they try. But 99% of people don't ask. They don't try. That's the problem. Right. They don't ask, right? And especially if you say, hey, I, I love your book. I read it. It was a lot of fun. 
you know the person's going to want to respond back to you because you took the time to buy, to read their book, and to give feedback. So Absolutely. you know, people don't intentionally want to ignore you at all. They want to help, right? That's why Absolutely. you write a book to help people. Absolutely. And that's what people are have the mental mindset shift. They're like, okay, they're always afraid of all these barriers blocking them from what the reality is, you know? Absolutely. You know, you said, um, like, for example, you guys started the education company. You did all this investing, development, um, you got real estate, and then you started company, the education part of it. But, like, what was the main real drive that got you to say, hey, uh, there's a shift in going to, I want to be a coach. I want to help people. I want to uh, coach them and mentor them. Like, what shift caused, what, what, what caused that? Uh, two things that come to mind what, uh, in this order, too. One is um, a gentleman from the War College. We have a War College here on the island in, in Rhode Island. And he was going back to civilian life. He had had a few tours to Afghanistan. He heard about us, young, young gentleman. But he said, Chris, I've been in the military for I think it was 11 or 12 years. I'm done. I want to go back to civilian life. Before I do that, can you teach me how to do some real estate, the way you guys do it? Hmm. So long story short, I coached him. And hey, I – Cut off here. Are you, are you good? Okay, I think you're back. Okay, so long story short, I coached him, but I also started in coaching him, realizing how powerful it is what we're doing, buying and selling on terms without banks. And so that started us ramping up the thought process of, hey, let's go ahead and do this. But in doing that, we figured out, wait a minute, there's an enormous gap in the real estate education industry in general. And the, yeah. by, by gap, by, I, I mean this, I mean time from when you take a course to time when you do a deal. And sometimes that gap, sadly, people don't get out of. Like they buy a course, buy a course, buy a course. They never do a deal. So we developed a model that takes it by the hand, locks arms with them, gets in the trenches with them, and does the deals. Like we don't just sell and say, see you later, good luck. We say, let's do it together, and we revenue share. And there's no better way to learn than that. And so we, we realize we're filling a huge gap there, and it's hugely important for us to do that. We're all, so now we're all across North America because the model works. That's a really good model because especially in real estate, like I came from technology background, the real estate industry is still really old, like for the real estate agent wise, right? It's like really they need to be up to speed to 2021 and there's so much tech involved and it's not about the tech really, it's about the relationship, but the technology helps you accelerate the relationship faster and easier, right? And to maintain and sustain the ability to scale. That's the hardest part that they don't realize. Yeah, uh, you just said uh, two two things I want to I want to expand on. So one one was you said uh, just agents in general. Look, I, all the years I was an agent, I didn't know how to do what we teach now mm -hmm. on terms. I should have in hindsight, but I didn't. And the amount of property I could have acquired, but not just acquired, uh, helped sellers with, and not just helped sellers with, but also create multiple paydays instead of getting paid once on a deal. We get paid yeah. three times. On a deal. That that's huge. And the next thing you said was scaling. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting on this timing. So this morning I was in a room in Clubhouse speaking about scaling because to go from zero to a million, I don't want to water that down. And those listeners that probably say, well, I'd like to make a million. Okay. To go from zero to a million, it just takes more, more what? More muscle. It's like you got to muscle your way to a million, more calls, more follow-up, more email. You could do that by working harder. But yeah. to go from a million above to scale, that's not the same animal. That's a whole different ballgame. You become a CEO of your company and you have to scale and so that's what I seeked out back in 2017, an organization that could help us do that. I realized too, in like real estate, when I look at companies and ownerships and the, the way that they are built and the way they run, I see it kind of like, for example, it's kind of like college in a way, like in college, you learn the basics, but you don't really get deep into the trenches. Like they're not showing you all the financials of life, not just financial models, but real life scenarios, real life examples. Where's the real estate, real life examples of like, hey, here's exactly like partnering together, buying on terms, buying properties, going through all the contracts, all the remodeling, all the work. There's no course that walks you through every single step of the way to really become a real investor or a developer, right? That's the hardest part. Yeah, it is. That's why you've got to have what I call the interactive coaching. And I'm talking about as, as nitty gritty as micro, Matthew, as if you're a student of ours and you make a call to a seller, I'm going to critique that with you. I'm yeah. going to go through it. I'm going to say, here's what you should have said this. Here's what you should have said this. Now go do two more and send them to me. And we go through this process of interactive coaching. We call it ACA. I'll share this acronym with you. A-C-A-A. -A -A. Action. So they take action. Then C is critique. And then A is based on the critique. We make some adjustments. And then the last A is take action again. So notice it's not action critique. Uh oh, I quit. It's a constant action critique, adjust action so you get better and better. 
Exactly. I think like you mentioned too, and I always, I talk about this a lot too, like in real estate, it's like a sport, right? And you really have to not practice on your clients, but you really have to practice. You really have to learn. You have to educate yourself and be willing to keep doing it over and over and over again. So that way you can improve your skill sets, right? And you have to take action. You have to also adjust because if you keep taking the same action over and over, you're not adjusting. You're really not learning, right? You're just doing something really bad. Right. So there's uh that brings up a, a cool point, which is kind of the difference between a hands-on coach and more of a like mentor or consultant, right? So it's okay, whatever you want to pick. But I think that rolling up your sleeves, getting a coach to, who can roll up their sleeves and do it with you allows them to do what you just said, to adjust on the fly, to learn the real stuff and get the get the deal done. It's kind of like, you know, in basketball, like I look at like Golden State Warriors, for example, Steph Curry and all the team, right? How tremendous amount of time do they spend coach uh, training? And the coach trains next to them, right? And even he he's even so good at it too. And he, he was a player as well, right? And he's doing it side by side with them to perfect them. But the 10,000, probably 100,000 for Steph Curry of hours they put into it to make it really to be the best. And most agents don't take, or even investors don't take the time they need to keep ramping up daily, right? Those dedicated yeah. hours. Yeah. So, so those pillars I said earlier, the, the, the mindset, the skill set, the systems, I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you what I think the weight of the average should be when you say take the time to develop. I, and I'll tell you what someone said the other day on my show, but I think it's at least 80% goes to the mindset pillar. And then you can break down the other two at 10, 10, if you want. I had uh, Peter Sage. I don't know if you know Peter, but uh, he was, he's in the personal development space for 30 years, S-A-G-E, if you look him up. He yeah. has an amazing TEDx talk. And he, he said to me, he was in jail three years ago. And he said to me, Chris, your listeners probably want to hear that the mindset piece is 60% and then 20, 20. He said, yeah. but I'm telling you, it was at least 80. Is It was all mental for his development. And this is a guy that had a, he had a teacher for all these years, but then he had to actually go, uh oh, I'm, I'm placed in jail. It was a bad rap. And what do I do? I got to put this stuff into, into play here. It was critical. Uh, so it's an interesting thing if you find him on TEDx. Yeah, yeah, definitely check him out on TEDx. Um, I think what that just brings me to a key point. You know, um, they talk about how Olympians, they have to train for four years, right? They train for four years before they can even start and be in a competition, right? So what's the mental mind shift of four years to train? And if you don't make it to that day, that day or you fail, or, you know, it's like all that years, not not hours, years, you know, spent to get there, right? That's the, uh, I think they're one of the strongest mental mind, uh, mindsets. I would agree. And professionals, because here, uh, there's a video that goes out to our students, right? And it's, and it's on this note. It says, look, in, 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 de in detail, but just give you the high points. It says, basically, look, this is for the serious and committed. And what I need you to do is commit to 36 months with blinders on. It doesn't mean it takes you 36 months to do a deal. It means if you commit to 36 months, like the Olympian commits to the four years, mm -hmm. with no turning back, I know you'll have a great experience with me or you, or any business, frankly, you could learn how to run a business for a restaurant. It doesn't matter. If you follow the step of, hey, I'm going to give this 36 months, I'm not going to have anything distract me, you'll have a great experience. You got to commit. But you know, we all want instant gratification right now, right? Of course we do. Of course we do. <laughs> I want it yesterday. I want it a minute ago. You know, like, give me the results now. I deserve it now. It's free, right? I don't have to grind at all. That's yeah, so let me, let me, let me, yeah. Let me let me let me bum out everyone listening when I say there is no uh, cheat map. There is just there's no shortcut. Sorry, not in real estate anyway. You got to You got to do what Matthew's talking about, what I'm talking about. You got to commit and then you'll have a great experience. I will say that there's wealth for life if you do it right, but there's no shortcut. I think there's a mindset shift there, too. Like, how do we get some of the people out in the field for everyone? Like, get them over the hump, like. There's no free free token to just get to the top. You know, you have to really earn it and learn it, right? Yeah. And people want and they say they deserve it, but like really, like we spent all of our careers grinding it out to get here, right? It wasn't yeah. easy at all. There's a lot of failures. Yeah, again, I'll probably step on toes, but you don't deserve anything. You you yeah. literally don't deserve it. You gotta earn it. Yeah. Now, Gary V says it all the time too on all his stuff. He says, like, none of us, you know, we're all you know. <laughs> all the bad words were all there, right? And we have to make, really make it and push ourselves to get there and look at past experiences from all the top people. They went through a lot to get there, right? How many failures did Elon Musk go through, Disney and everyone else? Yeah, I think um, I just heard a stat on that note the other day. There was two things I picked up on it. One was Oprah Winfrey. They told us she wasn't fit for TV. 
Yep. And then the other one was Dr. Seuss. I think he got rejected 27 times. I, I It was yeah. probably an old stat, but I just revisited the other day in, in one of the books I heard, our audio book. And just think of things like that. And you and I could probably find thousands of those stories. They're out there. And we got to we gotta be one of them. Yeah. And I think that it's just that the mental shift to really focus and to be able to get through those barriers with all the naysayers out there in the world and try to get rid of some of them, you know, especially ones you can and just keep focusing with the right mindset that you want to be where you want to be. And you can, you could get there if you really, you know, are good at it, except for when they talk about sports, if you're not good and fit and tall and whatever, you might not be able to get into it as easily. Right. Some of those are yeah. different challenges. Yeah. When you say naysayers, look, you, do, you don't have to listen to anyone. Let's just be blunt. You don't, you, in fact, let me rephrase that. You shouldn't listen to everyone. And so the only people you want to listen to is the people that are where you want to be and still and still actively doing wh what you want to do. And if they're not doing that, what are you listening to them for? They're not going to get you there from a from a business standpoint, and a personal development standpoint. That's the case. Yeah. And a lot of them say, oh, I never done it before, but you didn't do it either. You know, crazy or they haven't been there and they don't think you can get there because they don't know, they don't really know how in, in you how passionate you are to get there, you know. The challenge well yeah the ones that didn't do it don't want you to do it they, <laughs> they don't want to see you succeed you know everyone wants to see, like they're still competitive against you they don't want to see you succeed they're not going right. to bless you to all the way to the top you know and like you gotta leave me i want to hold you down back yeah so okay so here's another level of this of what we're talking about right now matthew that is yeah. you better constantly uh adjust and add to and subtract from your immediate uh center of influence and, and the soup the, i'll give you a facetious example if you put a, a cup of hot coffee on the table it'll eventually cool to room temperature right yeah if you put if you put a a, a nice cold drink uh, on the table it'll eventually warm to room temperature all that to say don't settle with your center of influence forever it's <laughs> constantly evolving and you should be thinking and looking and adjusting and tweaking and adding and subtracting every single year that's very true and i think a lot of us don't want to look back, right? People don't want to look at the past. They don't want to do business planning. They don't want to look in the future. They don't want to think about what's going to happen. They just kind of just live in between the lines and just passes by. Like here it goes, 2020 is gone. What, what did you do? I sat there and did nothing or else I built the hell out of everything I could with the time I had. Yeah. And that's okay. If you're, if you're hearing Matthew and I and you go, Hey, I'm happy with that mediocre. Okay, yeah. cool. Stay okay. in that lane. But if you're not happy, don't complain about it. Go do something about it. Exactly. So let's jump in. Let's speak about terms now. So like what is buying on terms? What is cash flow without hassle? How do you yeah. do it? So buying on terms to us, I'm not going to say this is universal. There are some things we've trademarked, but I'll, and I'll get to that. But we, okay. terms means lease purchase, owner financing, or subject to existing financing. Those are the three ways we acquire property and, and or control property. And when we do that, and we'll, we'll exit every single deal with three paydays because for years as a, as a rehabber, as a builder, as a realtor, those are all one payday deals. And it's okay. I just got to the point where I said, okay, every January, I got to reset the clock. I got to start that all okay. over again. Yep. How about instead we do three paydays? And in our case, uh, we're in a lower price area, Matthew. So our three paydays are worth about 75 grand a deal, but I have students as high as a quarter of a million because they're in, they're in areas like yours, California, mm -hmm. have some students and they in DC and they, it's, you're talking per deal. That's a, that's a game changer right there. Yeah. Let's talk about that too. Like you just mentioned three different ways. Let's talk about each one individually and they like break it down. Like how, what does it mean? Like how do people sure. do it and what does it mean? Sure. I'll start with my favorite, uh, not necessarily the easiest to enter when you're brand, brand new, but my favorite is owner financing and owner financing to us. We have kind of a niche within that niche. And that is we're going to seek out owners with no mortgage. They're free and clear property. Super important to know that they're not stressed out <laughs> or they would, or they have <laughs> some debt on it. So we look to pay their price or even higher premium as long as they'll give us a term long enough to, to justify that price, meaning we're going to then pay him or her, the seller, instead of a bank. We don't take out loans. We don't sign personally. We're going to pay that seller monthly principal only payments, no interest. So if you think about that, that remember what I said, how we designed this niche. We designed it after the OE crash. Yeah. Therefore, it's got to be recession resistant. It's got to be able to weather storms. And one of the ways to do that is hammer down your principal every month. You don't care what goes on in the market. If you have a 10 year term, well, your principal's dropping like a rock. And so that's the owner financing uh, uh, piece to those three. 
a smart um, move because I'm going to jump in right here because yeah, yeah. you just mentioned a key word. You're not paying interest. So there, people are going to ask you, how do you work with the owner and pay? You just froze if you can hear me. One second. You hear me? Okay. Yep. Now you go. Sorry. So I was just saying that, you know, most, for example, a lot of uh, audience would ask, doesn't the seller want interest? Don't, you know, they want to make money on that too, right? Why would they take only principal? Yeah, you'd be surprised. See, the, the sellers that are debt free, usually, and you could call it ego or you can call it financially savvy, you can call it anything you want. Usually they're concerned with one thing price. Yeah. They want their price. The office building I bought, I paid is list price because I got my term. So if, if that's the case, now, if, if I'll give you a twist to this, if someone says, I want interest, we've done this too, I say, okay. So let's kind of phase it in. Let's do no interest for nine months or a year like I did in my building. And then let's take the balance then and amortize it. It's still a huge benefit because if you took a loan on day one, you're paying all interest at the beginning, as everybody knows. Yep. So you'd be surprised. Just have to ask a third of the properties in the United States, roughly a third of the properties are free and clear. So why not go talk to them? They're off market, most of them. You're not fighting with all the other realtors and investors trying to lowball properties. No, you just go talk to them. I think a key point to that is that most people do what other people do. So if a lot of realtors are buying and selling houses on the market, they're going to do the same thing. The people, the certain small percentage will be like, think outside the box. Why am I doing that? If 99% are doing that, why don't I do the opposite? I'll go find the owners. I'll go call them, see who, which sellers are, have no mortgages and see if I can make a deal and just ask. Cause the problem is people don't ask and they don't know because they, they are judging their own responses. They're going to say, no, they're going to hang up on me. They're going to say F you. They're going to, uh, not want to do a no, a, any kind of term deal or they don't, they have a over expected price, but you really don't know unless you ask. Yeah. You want to, and you want to stand out as a, as a realtor, let's talk directly to the realtors. You want to stand on as a realtor, do what I didn't know how to do when I was a realtor. We did 100 homes a year and I didn't know how to do this. And here's the thing. You walk into a listing appointment mm -hmm. and sometimes you can't take it for whatever reason, price, commission. You just you can't. Or sometimes you take it and it expires. How yep. about if you learn how to buy it on terms and now the seller is like happy as a clam because you either can sell it conventionally for them or you can buy it. Whatever works best for them morally, ethically and financially. You're a mm -hmm. hero. And there's yeah. not anyone else in your marketplace unless they were trained by us the right way. There's no one else in your marketplace that are going to compete with you. Nobody. You're standalone. Well, Chris, they're going to tell you, no one ever taught me how to do that. No one ever taught no, no one ever taught most people how to do it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, have you tried Google? Have you tried learning? And if you heard of the word, you can look it up and, and start learning about it and you can see who's doing it. And then you can learn from them or you can try to do it on your own, which will take twice as long or 10 times as long anyways. And then you no, start I agree. It. I agree. Um, I'm big on free. You, you can go on YouTube like you just alluded to, right? And you can, <laughs> in fact, we have over, I don't know what it's up to now, 120 deals posted nice open openly on youtube showing you how we do the three paydays showing you what the seller did showing the challenges we show everything go look it up it's free people like i don't have time to do that i don't have time to watch you know but at the same time if you really want to do something you got to watch you got to do you got to learn and you know put your foot out there right and put your yep. put your hand and you know raise your hand if you want and start talking to the people who are doing it and and I'll, I'll, I'll share another story i love the real stuff because it's not there yet. so David Nurse is a uh, NBA optimization coach. So he, he'll take the new players, like I'm talking these guys are making 10, 15, 20 million, right? He'll take them and he'll work with them one-on-one, -on -one, uh, mostly mental, but some shooting coach, but, but a lot mental. And when I had him on the show, he said the same thing you and I are talking about. So it's not beneath any of us or the listeners. He said, yeah, sometimes I'll just take the, 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 the individual and we'll find someone that, that has – conquered what challenges individuals are looking for we'll go seek that out and they'll just model after it and he's the coach of these million dollar players they're just doing what you and i are talking about they're willing to do what you and i are talking about. yeah he just happens to be in the right niche to be with uh those nba players you know absolutely so that's all it is and then yeah everyone else has the same mindset skill sets they can do it but you have to find your right niche to do it and be select um be successful at it of course to be your be up there absolutely that's good. Then when he's doing that too, and you mentioned a good word, optimization. So he's helping the players optimize and he's using mindset as a way to optimize their skills, right? Yeah. And he has a cool book. I don't know if you've read it. I'll, I'll say the title. It's called um, Pivot and Go. That's his book. I read it before I had him on the show just to get to know him. And to your point earlier, 
before I came on, you said, hey, it's really cool if you can read someone's book because you get in their mindset. Well, yeah. So it's a, it's a cool book for anyone to read. Yeah, definitely. And I think a lot of people need to check out your book as well. It's actually over there. I, th I would have to go grab it, but it's over <laughs> there. <laughs> it's, time to, it's time to read it because you really do books really help you learn a lot from the individual who wrote it and they're writing it to help the audience right and that's a great thing because you're sharing your internal you know failures your internal successes gratitudes and just motivational inf and good information and that helps a lot and will it really we all need to take the time to read more to learn more from everyone who's doing it you know it will, of what we want to do absolutely so let's talk more about the terms now. So you mentioned one was owner financing, talking to um, owners and figuring out either price or interest in terms that fit them. And that's one of the models there too. Is there any challenges to, the, to that model? Like what do you, what comes across when you talk to sellers uh, about that? Um, I don't have a challenge with it now after this many years, but I'll tell you what I, what I see in my student base. And that is you've got to have the conference right back to what you and I talked about earlier. Why? Because when you're talking to a seller, you could be talking about their most valuable asset in most cases, 300, 500, a million dollars. We bought an oceanfront this way in our area. So do you have to be confident with talking to that seller? Yeah, you better. Or why would they turn over an asset to you? We don't put money down. Why would they turn that over to you with no money down? It's their most valuable asset. They got to trust you. So you've got to build your confidence up in order to get through that challenge. But also we allow, we have a national group. So, so the new person can go, hey, uh, how long have you been at this? Well, I'm part of a national group that has been at this X amount of years, and they just go look it up. So there's some credibility and confidence that are very necessary. Second. Okay. Good. Can you, repeat, can you repeat that one part? Sure. So there's a there's a there's a piece of confidence and credibility that's absolutely necessary. And what we do to, to help that, not just coaching on the confidence side, but also giving them access to a national group of people just like them. So the seller can go check out that group and say, ah, I got it, credibility. That really works too, because like you mentioned, when you have a group of people who are, you know, wanting to do the same thing, learning and sharing their experiences, and you quickly have a good audience and at the same time, good support. So you're able to do a deal a lot, a lot faster because you're, you know, being constantly motivated, but at the same time, constantly learning from people's success and their failures. So you know how to speak more confidently of what you're doing and understand all the different questions sellers may come up with, all the different issues and how to resolve them quickly, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Again, that's, that goes back to that interactive that we talked about. That's the coaching that's necessary. Hmm. And what was the second thing about terms of when you're buying properties that you mentioned? Uh, as far as the metrics? I uh, know. So for example, one was owner financing and then oh, the got, it. One. got it. Uh, lease purchase. Lease purchase lease. is yeah, super easy entry for the new person. Why? Because deed never transfers. All I do is I speak with Matthew. Matthew's my seller. Let's say there's all scenarios, but let's say that Matthew has some equity. He's not in trouble. He's just trying to get his best price, let's say 300,000, and he didn't get it on the open market for whatever reason. He just wouldn't give in on price. He owes 250. My lease purchase agreement basically says, hey, Matthew, uh, for a $10 deposit in my lease built in, I'm going to, once I find my buyer to occupy your home, handle my expenses, I'm going to take over your underlying mortgage, which is 250,000, but I'm gonna make the monthly payment. And at the very end of the term, call it 36 months, I'm going to give you your 50 grand that you couldn't get in the open market. I'm going to give you the whole equity. So basically, there's no purchase price, but we use, we use the, the, the price of 300 to determine how much equity Matthew has. And we said, let's protect that equity. You're not going to get it. You would have had to sell with an agent or you would have had to come out of pocket for closing or you would have to negotiate. Nope. I'm going to protect the whole 50. And at the end, I'll pay that off and I'll pay off your loan. But guess what? The loan's not 250 anymore, right? The loan went down over the years. So yeah. again, we create our three paydays. The back end is one of them. And that's because of all the principal pay down that we realized. But the lease purchase is super simple. The owner does nothing. They just wait for it to cash out. That's actually, yeah, that's a good idea because you're saying, for example, you have a 300,000 and then they had 50K equity and the loan amount in the beginning was 250 and you're helping to pay that down during your lease term to cover the mortgage. And then if you, for example, had a renter who was paying more than that, you're netting that money. But at the same time, you're guaranteeing the seller their 50k equity without even agent expenses off the top so you're getting the multiple strategies to um accumulate wealth right there and you're, yeah, owning and it, it, you're technically owning an asset that you don't have control yet of yeah it's control versus ownership and now yeah. okay so two things one is and one tweak to what you said is instead of a renter because mm -hmm. i don't want to deal with a renter that can 
rent my house. I want to be, I want to deal with buyers. I want to deal with buyers that need time. So we put them in a rent to own. Now with COVID, there's a lot of buyers that are good buyers with good credit. They don't even have a credit issue. They have some maybe reserves they have to build up because the banks have made it tougher. So there's a whole bunch of these buyers that need your help right now and you can help them. It's super important to know. So rent, a tenant buyer versus a tenant, different mentality altogether. That's very true. And a, a really good point too, because you, when you know a really good qualified tenant buyer that wants the property already too, that's a really good example, especially in some areas that can afford it because the income is so high that the equity might, or their savings that might not be there just yet, right. but you right. know, they're going to be able to support it and they want it. Um, you know, and then doing it uh, as a way to lease, to buy it or a, a renter to owner, and you're already, con you're controlling this part of it. But then at the same time, you have a new tenant taking this part. So that's a smart move. And I think that comes down to like creative financing, creative buying and selling and understanding different methodologies that normally people don't teach you and you don't think of yourself. You have to learn it from someone to do this. Yeah, and that, absolutely. Yeah. Cause remember, uh, Matthew, you, go ahead. you said, sorry, you said the word creative. I, I, I don't know how many of your listeners are tied into clubhouse yet, but mm -hmm. uh, we have a room called wicked smart real estate. It's all, it's all we talk about is creative real estate. So if, if, you know, if this starts to resonate, go to your point earlier, go seek it out. It's free. That's a good point. And thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Cause a lot of people are not on clubhouse yet. Sure. And you know, those who need it, you know, there's invites out there, go get it and be on clubhouse and join. Uh, we said wicked smart real estate and listen in because learning about creative finance, creative financing, creative buying and selling is actually one of the best, best things people should do because in the end of it, if you don't use it, it's okay. But as long as you learn it, it's going to help you a lot tremendously because now you have more ideas on how to help your client. your client. Your client doesn't need to just buy or sell a house. There are so many different ways you can help them achieve their goal. But if you don't know it or understand it, then you can't help them right fully. Yeah. You want to know a market. If again, if most of your listeners are realtors, there is a yeah. market brewing now, as you can imagine of people that for nine years built up great equity, mm -hmm. but now they're getting behind. I buy the list. They're getting behind on taxes. They're going to lose their house. They're going to lose all that equity they built up. Um, as a realtor, could you help them with a short sale? Perhaps if the equity wasn't as high, could you help them try to get out of that with some and clean up some debt? Yeah, but they're going to get messed up in the process with their credit, right? Likely. So how about if you go in there with the open mind, morally, ethically, and financially, like I said earlier, and say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, tell me your story. Tell me the numbers. Tell me everything. I will tell you the best route. I may list it conventionally. and We'll be done. We'll walk away. Or I may buy it, and that might be better for you. Let's look at all options. They're going to yeah. love you. That is a good way, too, because you're creating options for them. Like, you know how some companies, they have, like, um, you know, different kinds of, you know, offers and uh, strategies. So basically, I'll offer you cash, cash buyers, or else I'll list your home, or else I'll do something else. But at least they have options, right? And the, the buyer, the seller might not always choose the, just to list it because they might need the money tomorrow and you don't know what their circumstances are. But once you understand it, then you can help give them guidance morally, ethically, and legally um, to guide them on what they want to do. But yeah, I agree. I agree. You, you're also going to take down the wall. I did hundreds of calls as a realtor. I get it. And then now I know the other side of it, right? So, so this is nothing against realtors, but the fact yeah. is the sellers will, a wall will come down. A defense will come down when you say, yeah, I, yeah, I'm a realtor. I also could buy it. Let's chat. There's no, there's no defense there. I want to, I'm going to want the best for you. Yeah. And once you say the word realtor, sometimes they're like, oh, you're a realtor. You're going to sell me, you know? Oh, I, I hear it. I hear it on my calls. They'll say, you're a realtor. And I say, no, I, want, I buy homes in the area. Oh, okay. The energy changes on the call immediately. But if you could say you're both, it'll change too. Yeah, that's a good point. And hopefully more realtors can become buyers and investors. I, I hope they so. Should. I try to teach them like uh, our agents, like you really need to invest and you start young and start investing and start learning about investing. They should. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. easy. Wow. Like. It's not easy for all them, like a lot of agents to just join into, Hey, I'm, I'm going to buy my own home. Right. But really they should, because you're selling homes. You should really buy your own home too, and know how to do all the ins and outs of buying, remodeling, fixing flips, investing multi-units and et cetera. Right. Yeah. You need to learn that. So that was the second one. How about the, th the third one you mentioned? Yeah. Third one's a little bit more detailed and it's a complete opposite of the avatar of the seller. I said is not stressed with owner financing because it's subject to existing financing. Meaning I'm going to, let's put Matthew in the shoes of the seller again and say that Matthew is stressed out with his payment. He can't make it. He went through COVID. Something happened. He needs debt relief yesterday. Well, Matthew's more apt to say to me, just take my home over. So I will buy his home. 
I will not bring any bank or new money to the table. My settlement statement, my HUD statement says, subject to existing financing, it stays in place. I own the home. The loan stays in Matthew's name. I have homes. We have 50, 60 at any one time. We are not on one single loan. The seller stays on that loan, but we just gave him immediate debt relief. So that's the other way we buy. Now, the cool thing about that is, unlike the lease purchase, there's no time ticking away. There's no three-year end date. There's no four-year end date. So we have total flexibility with, do we want to do a regular exit, create three paydays with a rent to own? Or better, do we want to do a three or four-year rent to own, let that tenant buy approve themselves, and then owner finance that to them for 20 or 30 years? Now you created a whole income stream that as a realtor, you just don't have access to. And you helped someone still, but you also created a 20 or 30 year deal for you and your family. One house. Mm -hmm. Nice. Let's break that down a little bit. So you're helping a client, uh, a seller who's you know financially stressed out and you're giving them you know different options. And one of the options you mentioned was the ability to buy their house, but subject to existing financing. How do you exactly do that? Because when you're doing a purchase agreement, for example, you most loans are not assumable, but you mentioned you're not assuming the loan at all anyways, you're doing a purchase. Oh. And they're keeping their name on the loan, so are they? They're still tied to you in the in the, the on the title, right? We have agreement. Uh, good question, because it's a very good distinction. No assuming, because that means you got to go apply. Yeah, they're they're only tied to me by way. Of, they're not even tied to me because once I take title, I own the home. They're tied only to the bank. Still, technically, they're responsible. So, does that mean if I took off and and went to Tahiti and never came back, that they would be responsible? Yes. So that, so there's risk for them if they don't if they don't know you or if you if you're not going to be moral and ethical about it that could be a problem for them. There's ways to protect that. Uh, and that gets detailed. It's a simple wrap mortgage. But the fact is, no, you're not tied to them. Um, when the seller calls me when I have their when I own their home, I've gotten calls say, "Hey, when is that getting cashed out? Or when is this business arrangement going to end?" And my answer is, "There's no business arrangement. I already bought the house, but we'll let you know when it gets cashed out because I own it." And, the, and I said it was good because there's no end date, but that means I'm not chasing an owner to get a deed at the end of that, like I do for the lease purchase. And I'm also going to be able to, uh, from, a, from a tax standpoint, depreciate it and write everything off because I own it. There's also there's a lot of advantages to the owner financing and the subject too versus the lease purchase, even though the lease purchase is very easy to do. Yeah. That is, that is really good. So for example, taking title, owning the property without having a mortgage alone on it in the simple term. But of course you have to have that sh legal structure in place. So you're protecting yourself, your company and the seller at the same time and while owning the asset and taking the tax benefits from it. Yeah. So and you need to use end. the right, the right um, uh, forms too, the right agreements. Yeah. You said something about agreements. Our purchase sale agreement is very custom for us, especially yeah. the sub two. All yeah. the language, all the disclosures, everything's in there so they know what they know and understand what they're doing. And so isn't the owner financing and so isn't the lease purchase. All brilliantly written by our attorney over the years as we've refined things. I agree. And I think that's the number one thing too. When you're doing any of this, you got to have a really smart legal uh, team and CPAs and everything you need and you know investors, right? So you can fund these deals. You have the right legal structures in place and even lawyers over time, keep improving it, right? Because there's no yeah. one way, there's no one way. There's so many different ways to write the same thing, but you always want to just keep improving the process. Even in real estate syndication, there's so many ways to do a PPM. You have to really know what you're doing with a lawyer and they have to see all the different avenues of how to protect everyone. Yeah, yeah, for but sure. And, and it has their own taste, right? Every lawyer has their own taste. I always say, and nothing against lawyers. I always say the lawyers want to put their own scent on it, right? They do. <laughs> so they're, they're going to tweak it the same thing, but they're going to put it in their language. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes, sometimes that's good and bad, um, depending on what you're doing or what they're doing. But it's always fun to kind of go through that and like learn a lot about it and how people think about it, right? And different yeah. outcomes. And yeah, even them, everyone's learning forever. Okay, so those are like three different ways to buy and sell on terms. And then when you have when you coach new um, new investors, for example, who want to do this, what do they generally start doing first? Um, we have, like I just started a gentleman this week and uh, I met him on Clubhouse actually, mm -hmm. and he came into our program where we worked together. So the first call was all foundational. It was, let's set up your lead generation. Let's set up your CRM. Let's make sure you understand what the bank accounts and the legal structure will look like all foundational. And then the next call already, the second call next week, we'll start having him generate leads already Man. talking to sellers. Yeah. So it's, we, we teach our, our foundational course, Matthew, mm -hmm. 
there's no like shortcut. There's a foundational course that teaches A through Z what we do as a family. It's myself, my son, uh, Nick, and my son-in-law, Zach. And we nice. do the same thing every day. So all we do is transpose that information to the to the people starting. It's, we're in the trenches every day. So we understand yeah. what's going on. We understand since COVID, we get it. And so we just share the same stuff with the students. I think that's the best way. Like, for example, I, I hear some really successful coaches. They're the one in the trenches. For example, they'll be in a bullpen. They'll be calling with all the agents around them. And, and um, they start talking. You can hear them. But at the same time, they hear you too. When you're talking, they like, fix this, fix this, fix this, change this, change yeah. the tone, change the voice, change the sound. And they just get better at that. But if you're just sitting here, okay, here you guys go. Figure it out. You can do it. You know, it's a little bit yeah. it's different. It's different, right? Entirely. It's what I said earlier about rolling up your sleeves and, and actually getting in the trenches. I understand that. I was in, I, again, I was a realtor and I, and I had trainers that I'm sure you've heard of and probably still yeah. work with it. And, and they were very interactive. Yeah. I think the interactive helps a lot. So like during this time period too, like are people really selling right now? It's, you know, for example, it's COVID it's um, no one's buying, no one's selling, there's no money and the economy is going to crash. <laughs> Uh, it's interesting as, as things got hot and heavy. So, so when COVID started, there was uncertainty when it's uncertainty, mm -hmm. people need a guide. I mean, consumer indexes tell you that they need a guide. So our, our properties tripled all across, uh, us, they tripled how many we were taking us and our students tripled like in three or four months in a row. Yep. Then things, now people started getting, uh Oh, I got to sell and things get hot and heavy right now. In most markets, it's just starting to take a corner now. So it's just starting to get to the point where. Now sellers are a little bit more susceptible again, like they were about a year ago, to selling on terms because they're not as I'll say I'll say comfortable, but really they're not as cocky that they can sell tomorrow. Things are yeah. starting to change already. And so there's a lot of transactions being done. But I will tell you, in the terms world, for the next nine to twelve months, you have an opportunity to literally stack up a decade of income if you do it right in these three paydays. You really do. There's like a window here with still uncertainty. So you have a chance to help a lot of people. And as a result of helping a lot, you stack up your three paydays. I agree with you right now. And let's say just for example, one market, one market might be really hot. That's okay. Go look in a different market. You'll, you'll find a lot of people to help. You know, it's it, not always that one specific area that you need to be in, you know, I love it. I love it. Spot on <laughs> Matthew. You said it because people say to me on shows, what, what do you think about the market? What, yeah. which one? Yeah. There's mark there's sub markets all over the country. Yeah, let's so say there's a billion sub markets. Go find it, right? If, yes. You're not stuck in for example, you're not stuck in New York or San Francisco, California or Miami Beach, right? You're you can have so many opportunities even like five minutes away if you look in that market, the sub market, right? Yeah, and then within the sub market, there's different niches. I had a gentleman on my show mm -hmm. yesterday, you'll love this. He he was he used to be in the FBI, then he went to Hawaii, semi-retired, then he said, Oh, this isn't what it's cracked up to be. I want to do real estate. So he learned real estate. He travels in an RV, towing, uh, towing some of his toys, and he focuses on one market. This would be great for the realtors. He focuses on probate okay. because okay. if you look at the baby boomers, 78 million of them, you fast forward to 2026, there's only, there's only 2 million. That's a big number of probate, of, of homes, of families that are going to need help. That's what he focuses on, and he, and he exits them on terms. That's how we met. Nice. Pretty, pretty interesting. So go find those. You, you're never going to run out of those. Yeah, but I want to do what everyone else is doing, the same exact thing, and be com highly competitive and, and not win easily. <laughs> Crazy. I think that's called insanity, right? Sometimes it's called insanity. Right. But you're right. There is probates. There's divorces. There's so many different avenues you can choose, but you really have to just be open to what you want to do and see. You like luxury homes? Perfect. You like condos or you like fix and flips? You like dirty stuff? Right. That's fine. Just right. figure out what you want quickly and then start doing it and learning from the best who do it. Right. So like Spot buying on. and selling terms, you want to learn about that, then start talking to Chris, start learning about buying and selling on terms, figure out which part do you like to do uh, lease to own? Do you like to do, um, for example, seller financing, or do you want to do, you know, uh, buying it and holding on title and let them, let them carry the financing. There's options that you can start doing. What are some of the challenges that you have to help new, uh, new students get through in the beginning stages? Like how do you help them break through those barriers? What, what do they have? It's usually not skill set. It's usually the mindset. The only skill set piece that does come into play, that's an easy one, and then I'll go to mindset, is the scripts, as you know. You gotta, you can't, I don't care if you're an agent or investor or both, you cannot go forward without being the master of the scripts because then that crushes your confidence. You gotta get to the point, I remember as an agent I did this, where I was brand new and I would sit every morning just read the scripts. Why? Because I couldn't wait to get on the phone with the seller because I already had the 10 or 12 objections I know they're gonna ask me. It's not brain science, but you gotta get to know them 
You get a role playing, you got to get good with that. And so people have a fear of doing that. That's that's the skill set piece. But on the mindset piece, it's much deeper, unfortunately. It's much harder because people have to get out of their own way. And it just depends. People have different paradigms. So there's not one mental piece we train on. But yeah. Matthew, part of our academy, we have different courses. But there's two main courses in there. One was done with myself and Dr. Joe Vitale from The Secret. And one was done by a gentleman who used to train agents. And he's an attorney and a speaker. And he passed away. He was a good friend of mine. So one is called the 31 day billionaire and one is called money makeover. Why those in our courses as investors? Because it's the mental game. Yeah. And why, why do some students come out of the gate after taking our course on the skill set side of things? Why do they come out of the gate and do a deal in 30 days and others take 365 days? They took the same training. Yeah. So why, why is that? It's the mental piece. I know it's so tough for to help people and to even for yourself, like for ourselves, it's hard to break through some of them sometimes. Like you know it is there. And easy when you're a coach, it's easier to see them. And even for yeah. yourself, there's still a mental barrier, a mindset barrier to break through it, but you know you can do it. You just gotta get it done. But at the same time, when you're helping students, you gotta help them overcome them. Some of them are clouded and just, just you know, um, you know, figuring out all the things that are going on in life. I understand that, but help as a coach, it's good to help them break through those barriers and easily see it. But you're right, 30 days versus 365 days. You know, a tremendous amount of time and difference. Like, yeah, everyone's smart. You just gotta break through those things that are blocking you from being to from being your best. Yep, absolutely. So, what's some of the big, for example, like when you're starting out, you're doing this. How long does it, on average, let's say, if you had a hundred students, on average, how long does it start for them to actually get their first deal in? This is good. So, we one of the metrics we track is called TTFD, time to first deal. Okay. Uh, because why? Because that that you're not leaving if we can get you to your first deal quickly, right? Why yeah. would you? It's too, it's too lucrative. Um, we're at about uh, somewhere between 120 and 140 days right now. Not That's bad. really good. Now, yeah. what's what skews that? The person that has some blocks, it takes a year. But also what skews that is the person that comes out of the gate. Uh, Jeff from Seattle comes to mind. Comes out of the gate, goes gang buses, is not afraid to call, calls hundreds and hundreds of people and does a deal in 32 days. This is probably yeah. worth 60, 70, 80 grand. So there's extremes, but 120 to 180 is very safe, even though our average is sitting around 120, 140. Okay. I think that's a fair number and that's a good number. Yeah. Um, and I, the challenges I see for people out there is that they're scared to call, they're scared to ask, or they don't, they don't have a confidence because they don't practice the scripts. And the other part of it is due to timing. For example, if they have family and they have a full-time job, I get it. That's totally understandable. You don't have that much time left. You're tired. You don't have the energy. You're not motivated. But if you can make time, you can focus. And you know that is your goal to get out of your day to job and to have a real passionate career and you know uh, build generational wealth through passive income stream as well as active income streams, then you can do it. But it's, it's not easy at all. Like I had multiple jobs at the same time. It wasn't easy. It was hard. I, I agree. There's a gentleman in Fresno, California, who I met in 17. And he said, my goal is to be full-time real estate in two years. Uh, he had a one-year-old at the time. No, the, a newborn, sorry, at the time. And he was commuting every day and working 12 hour days and Saturdays. And he was a top of his game in that job. But we set a plan up and it took what you just said. He was calling on his way to work. He was calling on his way home from work. He was fitting it in wherever he could because he had a set game plan that he committed to. And two months later than two years, so it took him 26 months, he's full-time, and then he progressed, and he's one of our coaches. So nice. back to our uh, first 10 minutes of our chat today, you got to commit. He committed. You can go, ah, oh, try it. Maybe it'll work. No, I'm going to do this in two years, Chris. Show me the path. Yeah. I think that's the best way. When you can sense a student wants to commit now, and you can see in their eyes that they want to commit and that they're willing to do it, and they know by, for example, hey, if I'm driving to work, that's 30 minutes there, that's 30 minutes back. I can make three, five, 10 calls. I can, I can listen to a 30 minute podcast. I can listen to right. a course. I right. can, not, I don't have to sit there and just drive. I don't have to sit there and just listen to music. Right. I can read, I can listen to audiobooks. There's so much time that could be taken to be used. You don't need to be surfing social media all day to consume oh. content. You should be creating content, not consuming it. Right. Correct. Correct. Spot That's the on time. And, oh, watching TV. I get, you need some free time. You need family time. Family time is always important. Everything else is not as important. Uh, I agree. We're a family company. As I said, in our community, we call the wicked smart community is very family. Like we attract a lot of people that say, Hey, I kind of want that. I want to have my family in the business, or I just like being around people that care for each other. That's our community. Nice. It's, that's a, it's always a good community to have. And when you see like family first and 
uh, people taking care of each other and watching out and then, you know, your family's of interest and you're even for you, you have your son involved in your business. And that's really good as a, as a dad, you know, you're, you're doing multiple things. You're not just working, you're actually coaching, you're actually spending time, quality family time, and you're helping your sons grow, right? And learn from you. Absolutely. You can't, uh, family or no family, you can't grow your business. You're going to be in the grind forever. If you can't develop people underneath you, that's the key to scaling period. I think that's a challenge for people like, uh, to be able to coach people with you and help them grow as well. And to be able to scale, that's a challenge, right? A lot of people are individualized. They're not scaling anything. They're just doing and just riding the hamster wheel until they're gone. Unfortunately for a lot of people, right? Yeah. I agree with the hamster uh, analogy. So here's the, here's a, 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 a way to think about this. We have an event coming up and we have two, we have one theme, but we have two shirts we put out for the event. One is called muscle to a million because as a realtor, I did it in many years and in other businesses, I did it. And I don't want to water it down. Cause I, as I said, at the beginning of the show, everybody wants to earn a million. I get it, but you can muscle your way there by doing more calls, more follow up, more email. If you can, you could do more. To, to go to what we call crossing the line, which is the theme of the event coming up. It's virtual in a couple of weeks. Nice. Uh, it's, called, it's called business scaling. And, and the theme is crossing the line because when you cross the line from six to seven figures, what got you there will definitely stop you from getting to the next level. You got to change and become a CEO and be able to scale and develop people like you and I just alluded to. Cool. Yeah. Send me the link later. Let's post it and share it with our group um, and audience and we'll have it all in the show notes, but Sweet. you know, definitely that's a great way that people should go th uh, to the event. When is it anyways? It's March 31 and April 1. March 31, April 1. Okay. Every, every year we do it. Okay. Hey, just tell us right now, what's the website so we can learn more. Yeah. Just go to biz, B I Z scaling.com biz scaling.com. Okay, let's see bizscaling.com. I see it right here. I'm just pulling it up right now. So everyone out there, you know, be sure to check out Chris's event on March 31st and April 1st at bizscaling.com and learn more about the virtual event. And you mentioned it's free to attend, right? No, biz scaling is not. Our master's class is free. We got a bunch of other free resources. They can okay. go to um, the, the smartrealestatecoach.com forward slash master's class. That's free and, and probably a good step because if you don't like it, then don't do anything else. If you like it, dig deeper. Hey, cool. So yeah, be sure to check out smart real estate coach and Chris and about to wrap it up. Anything else uh, that we should tell our audience? Like what's the final thought you want to give them something they should be doing for 2021? Yeah. Final thought is this. I don't care what niche you're in realtor. I don't care if you're out of real estate. Here's a three step formula. Uh, find a niche that you can get behind and get passionate about. Like we just talked about, find a person in that niche, still doing deals actively and they're where you want to be. And third, put the blinders on for 36 months. So we touched those, but there's the three formula. <laughs> Perfect. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for being on our show, Chris. Uh, love to have you here. And then we'll see you on the next upcoming ones too. And hopefully we'll have a big event soon with all of our guests. Love it. And love it. There. Thanks, Thanks everyone. So have a good day. I uh, will see you guys next one. The Truth About Real Estate Podcast. Have a great day. Bye.